Let's discuss uh, oil analysis for compressors. What are compressors? Well, they are very similar to pumps. Uh, with pumps, we're thinking about uh, moving some sort of fluid or gas through a pipe. With compressors, it's mostly gas that we're moving. And the big difference, of course, is because gas is compressible, we are uh, approaching it. It's a mechanical device to push gas through a pipe or pressurize it in some way. There are three major types of uh, compressor out there, and it's all to do with the principle of operation. There are reset systems where the lubricated uh, components are predominantly bearings and pistons. Uh, there are centrifugal compressors where predominantly the uh, lubricated components are the bearings which are sealed from the process. And then you also have rotary uh, compressors. And rotary compressors, the lubricated components are bearings, screws, scrolls, veins, lobes. There's a series of different systems that are in there. We're going to focus mostly on the rotary because 45% of compressors that are sold um, into the industrial and fleet markets are for compressed air. Compressed air is the most the major application for compressors. It's considered the fourth utility after um, a, a, after uh, fuel, after electricity, and after water. And the big difference with the fourth utility is it's the one utility that end users have full control over. In other words, you produce the amount of air that's needed in order to power factories or various systems on fleet or industrial applications. There are two general classifications. There are oiled and oil-free types of rotary compressors. Um, oiled compressors infer where the uh, the oil is mixed with the gas that you're compressing, and then that's forced through the compressor. That's the most predominant system that's used for industrial systems. However, about 30% of the market now uses oil-free compressors, and that simply is, is where the oil is not mixed with the air ahead of time. Um, and that's particularly helpful for medical or pharmaceutical or food grade applications. In all cases, uh, oil is used for both lubrication and particularly for the uh, rotary systems, cooling is a major, major property that needs to be addressed. So much so that actually when you actually buy uh, lubricating fluid or, or compressor fluid, they often refer to it as a coolant more than actually a lubricant. Uh, many of these are synthetic or diester blends and that's because they are focused on the application. And so just let's take a look at what the general uh, uh, approach is. If we have air, we've got a filter, a dryer, we mix the oil and the air, we punch it through the compressor like a rotary screw or a vein or a lobe system, then we cool the air, we separate it, the air is used for operation and the oil goes back into the reservoir and then mixed out again. It's a very, very efficient design. It's incredibly useful and widely used. The downside is, however, is that that oil is, is picking up all the contaminants that might be present in the intake air. And that's one of the issues that we worry about, why we should monitor it. Because the failures, when you have a compressor failure, typically what can happen is, is that you can have the air end of the compressor overheating. It's Remember, as we compress air, we generate huge amounts of heat, and that's got to be removed some way. Uh, if you don't remove that heat, you'll cook the bearings and the gears rapidly in as a matter of hours if you don't have any lubrication. Um, you also can have corrosion if there is a lot of contaminants getting into the system or the oil is not the right type. You can also have abrasive wear if there is a lot of particulates getting in or does wear being produced. This all can be predicted and uh, prevented by doing routine lubricant analysis and that helps to extend the life of the compressor. So with lubricant analysis we're focused on the contamination that could be coming in from the air, we're looking at the acidity, so the performance of the oil, the moisture and the particulate. So as a result of that the tests that we always recommend for, for compressors pretty much across the board is always check your viscosity because that's indicative of the oil type as well as if there's any oxidation uh, increasing there or, or if the oil has been polymerized beyond its proper norms. Water content is very important as well because if there's a lot of water in there it will, it will uh, 
uh, react with some of the other byproducts and the compression as well as heat and cause uh, degradation, rapid oxidation of your oil. So we, we, we always check that. We also worry about um, total acid number and measure all the actual uh, 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 acidity present in the oil. We also recommend you run infrared oxidation because that tells you if it's oxidation related or if there's other products in there that could be causing the acid number to increase. Particle count is very important because it measures the particulate. It's particularly helpful because you can also distinguish between ingress, sand and dirt from the outside if a filter is broken or clogged versus wear coming from the bearings and from the scrolls. And elemental analysis is very helpful to be able to look at both the ferrous and the non-ferrous material. Most of the wear that's being produced is generally quite small in nature, so we don't see a lot of large wear being produced when we have a failure. Most common is a corrosion issue uh, as a result of overheating. But when the wear does occur, you, you do want to be able to watch for that. Optionals are ferrous debris and wear debris analysis when you know you have a trend increase and in failure. Most manufacturers will give you gu alarm guidelines for these as well as most of the oil companies who are providing you high quality fluids, which are generally several orders of magnitude more expensive than traditional mineral oils. And they do require that you do a check on that on an annual basis. So our options for on-site analysis for compressors really are focused around being able to measure all the key tests that we just described. Um, certainly, if you just want to be able to look at the the, the chemistry and the contamination, that would be the viscosity, water, acid, infrared, uh, the, uh, the uh, mini lab, uh, reduced suites are perfect for that. If you want to fully expand out in an industrial environment, you have the full mini lab 153 series uh, that's available. If you have applications that are mobile or mining applications where you have onboard compressors on mobile equipment or on uh, mine sites, then the micro lab is a great solution for that because it's got built in all the key tests that are necessary for those applications.